So I want to walk through this growing grass animation and this little rain droplet animation as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. You can take a look at the scene I have here. I'm using an emitter uh, with some custom geometry that we'll create very quickly to create just a little bit of rain here and a little bit of a specific setup with the dynamics and all that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start a new scene and I'm going to drop a plane into the scene and I'd like to see the lines. And I'm actually gonna take this up to something a little bit more dense, let's say 15 by 15, make it a little bit more rectangular like I did in my first example. And then let's actually just go up to the simulate tab, hair objects and add fur. Because I had the plane selected when I went up to the simulate tab and selected the fur, you're gonna see here where it says object, it added the plane automatically. But if on your scene, you don't see the fur attaching itself to the plane, just go ahead and drag and drop plane into where it says object. And that's how we're assigning what we want the fur to grow on. And here we see we can actually see all of our underlying parametric object settings on the plane still. So you'll also notice that when we created the fur object, it created a fur material, which is really the kind of default hair material. And it actually assigned it to the fur. So we need to make sure that that all got set up correctly. So that's fine. If we go ahead and use the interactive render region, we can see the kind of effect that we're getting here. And the effect is generally, it looks like a thin amount of brown fur, like you would see on some kind of animal. And that's obviously not exactly what we want. And we need to actually go into this fur object and start to make some changes here. So first of all, let's start with a shorter length to where we're actually revealing a bit of this underlying shape. And you know, one of the first big things we need is more variation. So I'm gonna ramp that up pretty high because grass, you know, there's all the blades don't grow at exactly the same length. As we start to increase this length, you know, we're still seeing that variation in there and we can, we can kind of play with that slider to see what is gonna make the most sense and, and kind of give us the best effect. I'm gonna leave it around 15. Now, the next big thing that we need to work with here is just the randomization slider. And that's where, you know, this is looking way too perfect. So they give us this randomize where now it kind of looks a lot more like grasses. It looks like a field of tall grasses that are, you know, kind of growing across each other. Um, so it's really important to randomize it. Of course, if we take it too far, you know, we get a slightly different effect and that's, that could actually be really useful. Now, just to help see what this is gonna look like with lighting, I'm gonna go, go ahead and add a physical sky. And so, you know, that's necessary to really show us how these colors are gonna look. So I actually wanna make this much lighter because right now it does look more like a brown fur. I think what we're going for is a little more akin to like a dead, you know, grass. Um, so that's a little bit closer. And then this brown is probably just way too uh, red and, and kind of rich and saturated as well, and maybe a little bit too dark. You can see as we start to pull back on the darkness, it starts to appear a little bit more like grass uh, or grasses because it wouldn't be, uh, you know, kind of that extreme. So in my first example, I did actually decide to do more of kind of a sunrise effect where you know, it's starting at something at like seven in the morning uh, and then going, I think it went to about 10 or 11 in the morning where the sun is is starting to move up. So the lighting gets a little bit uh, flatter and, and less dynamic. So before I start animating anything, I'm going to actually extend this project out a bit to about 200 frames. And then I'm actually just gonna perform this kind of lighting animation by control clicking on the time here at frame zero, go forward, uh, and then I'm just gonna go for forward a couple of hours, maybe not even that far, something that looks a little bit better. So around 10 a.m. And so right off the bat, we're gonna get this first kind of time-lapse animation because that's kind of the effect we're going for and watching this grow. Next, I'm gonna animate the fur length. So this is where we're gonna decide the kind of beginning and end of this or in the 60s. Now, if I take that to four, it actually does look like barren land. So that's kind of a helpful effect. And obviously we're gonna want to put a material on this underlying object. But for now, let's just go ahead and lay a keyframe uh, at frame zero. And if I actually just turn on auto keying, because that's now a keyframed attribute, it's just gonna automatically lay a keyframe. And now here is kind of season to taste. So let's see what it looks like at 83. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, that's a little bit more extreme than my first example. Something like that looks a little bit more natural to me. Uh, so I'll go ahead and leave it around 59. I'll turn off auto keying for now, and then I can kind of take a look. And when you're watching this animation in the viewport, it's very difficult to see because we're just seeing these guides. 
of Cinema 4D is just using these splines to show us what it's going to look like. So I'm using the interactive render region to just stop it, uh, you know, every 20 or 30 frames for what this animation is going to look like. So you can see we're kind of barren and then it starts to fill in. Now, the next big piece of the effect is to animate the color of the hair material itself. So here under color, I'm going to go ahead and control click a keyframe to start with this uh, kind of yellow. And then by about the, you know, 160th frame, let's say, let's just go ahead and dial in what we think the green grass should look like. So already the green uh, tip is really helping there, but also a little bit green at the base, and that might be a little bit too flat. So if we actually, let's make this one a little bit darker, and we'll see that gives us actually a, a helpful visual effect by adding a darker value and making it feel a little bit more dense at the bottom. Might just go ahead and brighten up this value ever so slightly just to brighten that grass up a little bit. And then I'm gonna make sure to control click another keyframe, very important to do that step there. And so now as we toggle through this, it should appear uh, brown at the beginning. And now by here, we should see it's kind of getting yellow as the green mixes in, a little bit more yellow, and then coming in to uh, the full green color. And so you can really decide, you know, what you want it to look like here. Um, so most of that effect is pretty good to go. Now, the next thing I want to add is some fun little raindrop elements for this uh, time-lapse animation. So now I'll go to the simulate tab and go to particles emitter and I'm going to turn off the interactive render region for now. And I'm gonna go back to my four panel view here. And we're gonna see if I hit play that I'm gonna see some, some guides. And if I click on one of these, I'll actually uh, get to see the simulation inside of that panel. And so I can see, I basically wanna rotate this 90 degrees and then bring it up. And I also want to go into the emitter itself and click on the emitter tab and change these X and Y values until they uh, kind of roughly match the size of this underlying shape here. Now, these are just emitting and basically being shot through space, and so that doesn't really look like rain. And so a more realistic version of trying to do a rain animation with an emitter would be to actually come to the particle and take the speed to zero. So now actually nothing is coming out. But then if we add a gravity to the scene, we should see that that's more like rain. So if we actually take the birth rate up considerably, we can add you know a lot more rain to this scene. But the problem we have now is that the rain is kind of going through and it's not really a good visual effect because the rain is shooting through our plane. So the next force we want is a destructor, which is basically you know a way to mask out and to stop uh, these elements from continuing. So we just need to go into the object size and make it roughly the size of our underlying plane. And then this Z value, this kind of height of the box, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be very tall at all. It just needs to basically contain our plane. So now if we watch the simulation from this view, you'll see uh, that the destructor is doing what we want, right? It's saying don't go any further. So it'll give us kind of a better um, effect. So you can see how it's kind of falling off the edge there. That's kind of cool. Uh, but if we don't want that, we can just actually make this a little bit bigger and cut everything off. So it's cool that we have this rain animation, but we need to provide some little raindrop geometry to the emitter so that we can actually see these particles. Because as of right now, if we go back to our uh, IRR, we are not going to see anything, right? The the emitter is showing us particles in the viewport, but when we actually look at the render, there's nothing there. So we can uh, quickly create some geometry, and I'll just do a quick box model. We'll use a cube. This shouldn't be too difficult. Um, let's just get in here, and we're going to want it to be a lot smaller, but we can make it a little bit cartoonishly large. Uh, and then I'm just going to hit C on my keyboard. Then I'm going to come into points mode, hit zero to bring up the rectangle selection tool, grab the entire top, hit T, scale that down a bit. I will probably make it a little bit more uh, of a kind of vertical rectangle. And then with the cube selected, I will hold alt and select a NURB object. And that should give me, you know, basically kind of a rounded out box that looks a little bit like a raindrop. I'll double click down here 
in the materials panel to create a new material and just create a, trans a transparent material, which should be pretty sufficient uh, for, for what we want to do here. We basically just want a little something that ref refracts and reflects, uh, which is all you know a drop of water does. Now I'm going to actually take this subdivision and hit C just to turn this into a piece of geometry. Um, just because I, I actually want to just take this single piece of geometry, which I think is a fair amount of geometry. It's not too dense, and of course it's gonna be a very small object, so I don't wanna go crazy with its poly count. Of course, we could make it uh, look even better, uh, but I think for what we wanna do here, that's fine. I'm gonna make it a child of the emitter, and then under emitter, we just have to make sure that show objects is selected. And this is where we can improve this visual effect too by you know, using something like n scale variation to you know push it around so not everything looks exactly the same. So because it's a simulation, I'm gonna go to the beginning and hit play so I can just get a feel. And then I'm gonna come somewhere towards the end. So I think that's looking pretty good. I like the way the rain is looking. I like the way uh, the grass is a little bit longer here in this experiment. I think I'm pretty ready to uh, set up a render pass here, render this out. Because it's a first test, I would render in something like a TIFF uh, at maybe a slightly smaller resolution just so I can crunch through this quicker and see the final result and, and see what kind of tweaks I would need to make. But I'm just gonna make sure that I have all frames selected, that I'm gonna up the anti-aliasing a bit so that looks a little bit better, and then go ahead and output this. So I'm here in After Effects and I've imported the rendered image sequence and I can see the grass growing effect uh, is working pretty well. I decided this time not to add all the animated displacement um, on this test just to see how it looks in a more static setting. But generally, I think we're getting a, a grass-like effect uh, that can be useful as well as a pretty decent little raindrop effect from Cinema 4D. And the original example uh, with some slightly different coloring, a little bit more rain, the grass didn't grow as long, and I think I used a little bit more randomization on this one, and you did get some really... Uh, kind of fun shapes at the edges here. So thanks for watching. If you end up making something with this technique, I'd absolutely love to see it. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time.